Robert Queen. Next is Robert Queen. Robert Queen. Robert Queen. My name is Robert Queen. I'm a proud uh, 1985 alumni of Crest High School. And uh, to be sure I stay in the time, I'm just going to read a cover letter that I'll be submitting copies to you folks when I finish. Uh, Dr. Hammond, as you're probably aware, many comments have been made in the past few years regarding actions taken or not taken by the Cleveland County School Board. Many things have been reported in the Shelby Star. Many statements have been made during candidate forums by incumbents and challengers and many rumors have circulated in the book. As an interested parent of CCS students and a concerned taxpayer, it's been difficult to separate fact from fiction. I started attending board meetings in August of last year in an attempt to figure out a few things on my own. While a few questions have been answered, many more questions remain. I'm submitting this letter with a list of questions that I would like to have answered by the board. Please note that I purpose, purposefully, it's a hard word to say, waited until after the elections to submit these questions. My purpose was not to influence an election, but to get to the facts for myself. I would appreciate a response by the board, uh, by the board meeting on February 10th, 2014. And please contact me at any time if there's any questions about my request. And I have copies to pass along to them. several requests to the board seeking information regarding various actions and expenditures <coughs> made by the board and CCS personnel. While I've received some information in the form of public records, there has been no real attempt to completely answer my questions. Your responses thus far indicate that you are not legally obligated to answer except to provide access to public records. While your position may be technically accurate, I do believe you have a moral obligation to the taxpayers of Cleveland County to justify your actions and your expenditures. I understand some of you believe most of the citizens of Cleveland County don't care about what's happened in the past and they want to move on. You can see by the number of people gathered here tonight that the citizens of Cleveland County do indeed care about what their school board is doing. I encourage the board members to talk to the folks after the meeting and hear the concerns firsthand. And for the guests here, I encourage you to be polite and be willing to express your opinion uh, to the board. In the last two weeks, Copies of several questionable receipts have been published online and discussed on the local Cable TV channel. Since this has happened, I understand there may be a few more board members interested in looking into the expenditures. We encourage you to do so. We realize that an audit and investigation will be embarrassing to those who have done things improperly. We're sorry for that, but we didn't cause these things to take place. It would be nice to have all of this taken care of before the new superintendent gets here. We should clean up our own mess. <coughs> To use a popular cliche, we're all in this together. The board is elected by the citizens of Cleveland County to oversee the education of our children and the operation of the school system. You represent us and are responsible to us to see that everything is done properly. When you fail to do what's right, you fail the students, the teachers, and the citizens. My recommendation to the board is that you do whatever is necessary to audit the questionable credit card purchases. CCS has an internal auditor on staff that should be able to perform or oversee this work. The board should also ask the district attorney to receive the tax on the SBI report that was generated as a result of the investigation of the school system purchase. I'm still seeking uh, a response to the questions I submitted to the board on January 13th. Other than the questions about the expenditures, it should only take a few hours to answer the other questions. Please keep in mind that there are no concerns beyond the credit card purchases. 
Citizens are concerned about the condition of our school buildings, prioritization of capital projects, and perceived favoritism of personnel actions. I know you take selection of the new superintendent seriously. You should definitely consider what your selection will give the citizens of Cleveland County. Comments, opinions, etc. And I believe we have one on the list tonight, Robert Queen. Dr. Hammond, Dr. Bowles, in my submittal to the board on January 13th, a portion of my request was for public record documents. Specifically, I asked for a copy of all open account purchases with Denver Equipment Company from January 2008 to the present and a list of select CCS personnel, job titles, and salaries. While reviewing the limited data you provided in your response, I found that the information for Denver Equipment Company only covered August 2010 to present. I sent an email to Dr. Bowles on March 6th with a copy to all the board members asking for the remaining data for Denver Equipment. I also requested CCS personnel job titles and salaries for the school years 2008 and 2009 to the present. I waited for 30 days to receive the information did not, but did not hear anything from CCS. I sent another email to Dr. Bowles on April 7th with a copy to all the board members asking for an update on my request. I specifically spelled out what I was looking for and added two requests. In addition to the Denver equipment data on the person and the personnel list, I requested a copy of purchases made at the Napa Auto Park store in Bowen Springs and Shelby from 2007 to present and purchases made with Virginia Air Distributors for the calendar years 2006 to 2008. A few days later, I received a letter dated April 7th stating that the information requested in the March 6th email was available for pickup at Central Services and that there would be a charge of $16 each for the disc. There was no mention of the additional information requested in the April 7th email. I stopped by to pick up the disc on April 10th. Now, I know this timeline of events is boring, but it lets you folks know what a person has to go through to get information. After reviewing the information over the weekend, I found the following. The Denver equipment information is still missing data from all of 2008 and only has limited 2009 data. The Virginia Air information did not any, include any 2006 data. The Napa Auto Parts information did not include any 2007, 2008, or 2009 data. The CCS personnel titles and, and salaries <coughs> list that appear to be complete. I'm requesting that CCS provide the missing data as soon as possible. It should be noted that it only took a couple of days to provide the last set of information, although incomplete. I also do not expect to have to pay for additional DS since the requests were not fulfilled correctly the first time. If the missing data is on the DS, I cannot find it because the data is so jumbled. This may provide insight as to why the purchases have not been, uh, our past purchases have not been audited and approved correctly. So I'm uh, submitting that as a request to have the rest of that data provided as soon as possible. I'd like to have a uh, topic on comments placed in a minute for a board meeting. Thank you for your comments. Madam Chairwoman, uh, board members, and Dr. Bowles. My comments tonight are to provide rebuttal to Dr. Bowles' presentation and board member comments at the last meeting. The receipts presented were obviously hand picked. I don't disagree that there was a legitimate reason for the purchases. However, the documentation presented to justify the purchases was not included with the receipts given to the public during, public, during past records requests. Even Dr. Bulls couldn't find the documentation for one of the receipts. But what about the purchases where employees bought fuel for their personal vehicles? What about the purchase of a four-wheeler at Christmas time? What about the instances where purchases were split into multiple transactions so as not to require a purchase order? What about the dozens, if not hundreds, of receipts where employees purchase single or double meals at local restaurants? These were obviously not awards banquets or travel meals. What about the school principal that purchased meals for traveling to away football or basketball games? And what about receipts where the superintendent took individual board members or administrators to lunch? There was no explanation for any of these purchases. Apparently, the state auditor's report was ignored. Section 1 of the report states the school district employees misused procurement cards. Section 2 states, internal control deficiencies contributed to employee misuse of school district assets. 
Section 3 states that school district employees did not follow policies and procedures. To the average citizen, those headings give a pretty clear description of what happened. But you keep telling us that there wasn't really anything wrong and that we need to move forward. As far as the public knows, only two employees resigned and the third was reassigned and roughly $4,000 and over $36,000 of unauthorized charges were repaid. This is not sufficient disciplinary action. Some of the board members' comments were pretty passionate at the last meeting. Some of you accused certain ones of the public for keeping this credit card issue stirred up. I guess I'm one of those. You indicated that money had been wasted during the credit card investigation and responded to public records requests. We were also watching the children trying to step on and knock down your school system sandcastle. Let me remind you that the public did not cause this situation to happen. It was the employees who abused the system. It was the department heads and directors who also abused the system and allowed it to continue. And it was the superintendent and board who did not immediately stand up, take responsibility, and put this issue to rest three years ago. How much money has been saved because this uh, purchase card issue was brought to the public? You seem to have forgotten that we, the citizens and taxpayers of Cleveland County, own the sand that you're making your sandcastle out of. If you would quit kicking the sand in our face and hear us out, we might just get you some concrete and steel to go with that sand build a better foundation for our kids. On a final note, just because I know there's a challenge at the board and administrators and their actions does not mean that we don't support our students and teachers. We're not trying to destroy the system around them, but we're trying to make the education environment better. And I ask that my comments be entered into the minutes as previous. At the September 28 board work session, Dr. Rick Barker with DNR Consultants presented an opportunity for CCS to hold, host several Chinese exchange students, as many as a few hundred. From the information presented, it appears to be a positive opportunity. According to Dr. Barker, the program would allow China's brightest students to challenge our students. Select uh, Cleveland County students would have the opportunity to study in China if desired and the economic impact would be beneficial to Cleveland County Schools and the county as a whole. During the presentation, Dr. Barker indicated that a board decision to move ahead was needed soon to be able to make arrangements for the next school year. The board took no action and did not provide a timeline to Dr. Barker for when you might respond. As I understand, this opportunity was first presented to the superintendent four to five months ago, and there have been one or two meetings with Dr. Barker and the Chinese. If the board or superintendent have concerns with this program and believe it to not be in the best interest of Cleveland County Schools, then please provide information to the public regarding your position. If it is a good program, why was it not acted on at the last meeting or at the very least added to the agenda for this meeting? I'm requesting a response to this question as part of tonight's meeting or by email tomorrow. Also at the last meeting, school performance scores and grades were presented to the board. Based on the scores shown, the four traditional high schools had grade level proficiency of 40 to 60 percent. But those same schools were graduating 88 to 91 percent. How can a school that only has 50 percent of its students grade level proficient graduate almost twice that? More discussion needs to be had regarding those scores and exactly what they're showing. So far it calls into question the quality of the diplomas that we're handing out. Earlier tonight, the board was recognized for completing training requirements for the previous school year. As I understand, board members are required by the state to complete 12 hours of training each year. A few months ago, I requested training and expense records for each board member. Most board members are earning 12 to 24 hours a year. However, there are two to three board members who are getting 40 to 50 plus hours of training each year. Their training expenses are four to five times what the other board members are. The last two years, the board has spent $27,000 to $29,000 on training. I was told the board members can go to any training they like and that no one approves training expenses. In two years of attending board meetings, I've never heard the board discuss where the board members should attend training or how much it costs. Individual board members have not reported back to the board what they learned at training. If all the extra training was important enough to spend the money on, Seems like it would be shared with other board members in an open forum. 
it would seem more appropriate to save some of that money to hire an extra teacher's assistant. I'd like to suggest to the board that all training requests be discussed in an and approved in open session so the public knows how the money is being spent. I also suggest board members provide a synopsis of what they learned to other board members. Thank you. Robert Queen. Next is Robert Queen. Robert Queen.